ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, species around the multiverse. Welcome to Geek Syndicate episode 317. I am, as always, am Monts, and with me is... That would make me Nuge, or so, Evil Nuge. Evil Nuge, an old man Monts. Yeah. Because <laughs> I've got the platinum the, showing in my beard. The worst team up ever. <laughs> So, uh, yes, this is the first time we are attempting to do uh, Geek Syndicate live via Zoom. Um, last minute thing. And um, last minute thing was to basically send a link out. If people wanted to like come along and listen and stuff. But to be honest, even if people didn't, we were still going to do it anyway. Yeah. So uh, this feels weird. <laughs> See, the, the weird thing was we've been chatting away for like 10, 15 minutes at the minute we hit record, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I don't know what to say. What am I going to do? Like we haven't done it for like, like 14 years. Yeah, do you know, it's just, oh, whatever, man. <laughs> okay, well, let's just start. Uh, you got any well, shout outs? Yes. Um, I need to uh, refer to my uh, email. So we had an email. So basically he wanted to get some thoughts from us on Star Trek. This is going back now. This is Star Trek Discovery um, Season 2. So what he's asked is, one, what did we think of season two? Two, did you have any favorite moments or things we wanted to change? Um, and three, any thoughts on season three? Now, obviously, all of this comes off the back of there's been a new Star Trek show announced, hasn't there? Mm. Which is, is this Strange New Worlds? Yeah. Um, who's st- starring Anson, once Anson Mount? Yeah, who is... Um... He played um, Christopher Pike. Christopher Pike, yeah, Captain Pike. Yeah. He said Chris Pine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit too meta, mate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, um, so, yeah so... Uh, hello, Darren. Welcome to the show. Hey, Darren. So off the back of that, so obviously we've got another Star Trek show coming anyway. What did you think of um, Discovery Season well, season 2? Um, I, I, I loved it. And the reason I loved it was because I'd got my head around it by then. And I loved season one, but I still had to work out, this is a much darker Star Trek universe than I'm used to. And, you know, given when it was set, I wanted things to look a bit more retro and they didn't. And that's one of those things you go, you know what, I can still enjoy the show, but it, it's there sitting in my head. Um, uh, so by season two, I'd got my head around it and just go, well, it is what it is. I'm just going to enjoy it. So I, I enjoyed it for what it was. I loved the addition of Pike. It, I thought it was awesome. And the fact that he's got his own show now, or the Enterprise got their own show, and they're actually going proper retro in terms of uniforms yeah, and, and stuff. I mean, that just makes me happy in my heart. So yeah, I'm all over that. And I know season three, they're taking it to a different place. And I, I, I was going to say- they, I, don't they they... In, I don't want to, I'm being careful. I don't want to spoil it now. Because I was about to say something, but that actually could be considered a massive spoiler. So I won't say anything. Let's just say they're going to be, the show as we know, it's probably going to be changed up quite a bit, I would imagine, given how season two ended. And I think that's a really brave move. I think that's a great thing to do is to change things up completely. And in doing that, I, I, I applaud that move. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. My first, my next thought though is, you know, well, where can they go now? But then I've said that before about shows and they've gone to great places. Yeah. But as much as I enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to season three, I feel much more uh, excited about the new series. I enjoyed Discovery. I'll probably get like, do you know what I mean? Get burnt out of stake for saying it, but I, en- I enjoyed Discovery. Um, and I really liked, what I liked about season two is the fact they kind of took on board the criticisms that they had. Uh, about season one, which I actually think a lot of the criticism, the lot, a lot of the criticism for season one w- was actually quite valid. Yeah, yeah I still yeah. enjoyed it, but it 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 wasn't. It, there was a lot of stuff I struggled with, and I and I think they worked really hard to address that. And I think bringing in Pike and just, I mean, the guy was such a positive character, and brought that kind of Kirk vibe as well. He did bring that. Um, Kirk vibe. But it, I think by bringing him in, it was that kind of, you know, um, a rising tide lifts all boats. Do you know what I mean? And I think everyone's game kind of got upped a bit and the positivity did kind of go up a little bit. And it was much more about trying to help people and blah, 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 rather than trying to show you just how dark Star Trek could be. Yeah. So I'm looking for, so I'm excited about 
season three, just because it's I, I like my Star Trek in any shape or form. But I am genuinely really excited for the new world show, Strange New World show, because yeah, I think absolutely. it did do a really good job. Also, that episode where it had number one was in it, and obviously it was then riffing off when when Spot came into it as well and stuff like that. So I think yeah, it could work. There's been some people that have been kind of saying, "Oh, do we need another show with another different guy playing Spock and stuff?" But I'm like, no, I'm all right, man. I'm all right with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. This one's before. Is yeah. this box after? No, it's all good. Was there anything <clears throat> we did we have any favorite moments of season two? Um, I think, as I said, going back to Pike, Pike gave some crack. Well, there was a lot of cracking speeches in season mm. two, actually. Um, I thought the last episode was really good just because know, it was yeah. full on. And there's something about, again, there's something about people making that ultimate sacrifice that always gets me. Yeah. So I always like that. But my one criticism for it is like, um, you know, I'm not a big fan of swearing on TV, but you know what I mean? Sometimes when people swear, it works. You know, it's natural. It flows as part of the thing. And they kind of dropped in some swearing there. And I just felt like, it's the Star Trek universe. My mind, but, they don't swear in the Star Trek universe. You know? know, yeah, it just doesn't work. It was they like in... It, they did it in Picard. In Picard. Well. And it just... It just it felt out of place. It just didn't work. So, yep. So that was that question. I, I've got a shout out to Sean McBee, uh, who uh, I've been chatting to recently, and he was part of the art department for the new Stargirl show uh, from DC Universe. Um, I'm going to talk more about that later, but uh, what's up, Sean? Yeah, what up? So do you want to uh, do a bit of news? I haven't got any. Have you got any? I wouldn't have said do some news if I didn't have any. <laughs> do you know <laughs> Easy, <laughs> easy. <laughs> Look, I'm drinking red wine with flamingos, man. It's where shit gets real. I don't, I don't even know what to say to that. Because I'm drinking a cheeky little, cheeky little Malbec, cheeky little Malbec. called San, Santa Ana. Uh, and as we know, um, I, I believe it was General Santa Ana who um, invaded uh, the Alamo. That, just that, making that stuff could, up now. That could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, man, I was in top history for a little while at school. Were you? Yeah. Were you in top anything? I was top history, didn't I? I worked my way up to top group, and then they changed the history teacher, and they got a different history teacher, and I was shit again, and I slid all the way back down to bottom. <laughs> yeah, the ups and downs of my life. Did you pass me on the way? Because I'm not really sure where I was. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we were in the same class of history for a little while, and then I kind of, on my meteorite rise, <laughs> which <laughs> lasted... <laughs> Which lasted all of a term, you know. What I mean? Hey, um, you know, I really loved history. When I chose it as an option, they made it modern history and started learning about Thatcher. And I'm like, yeah. what is this? Say history. Anyway, um, it's time for the news. Fade out. <laughs> Yeah, that gives me weird things that are like tells an unexpected man. Do, do, yeah. Do, do, do. Yeah, that, that, yeah. yeah, stop that, man. Stop that. Uh, yeah, news. You got some news? Yes. Um, first bit of news, because uh, it's been a while since we've chatted. Uh, Snyder Cut. Yep, yep. Snyder Cut. Um, so. Oh, oh. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Go if on. you've been living under a rock, right? You'll know that um, when they brought out Justice League, well, it was it was a little while after they brought out Justice League. So obviously, when they were doing when Zack Snyder was doing Justice League, um, he had a sort of a, a family bereavement, sadly, and he left the production. And then they drafted in Joss Whedon to finish it up, and obviously it was the film. And you know, as they say, it was history after that. Now. I thought the Justice League film was all right. Personally, I, it was I, all right. It was all right. I I didn't hate it. No, I didn't. That's, yeah, and that's where I was coming from. I didn't hate it. I thought it was all right. And to be honest, if they dropped that when I was eleven years old, I would have, I would have lost my shit. Yeah. Right. However, at the back of my mind, I think because I'd seen some of the trailers and stuff like that, I, I was interested. A part of me kind of wanted to have seen Zack Snyder do it. Yeah. Just, and, and because he'd done, again, regardless of whether or not you like Man of Steel, 
I did like with not you like Batman and Superman. I like the ultimate the ultimate version of that. Um it was his it was his sort of pet project, and I would have liked to have seen him finish that off. I would like to have seen his vision rightly or wrongly. And um so rumors then began to surface um that he'd done apparently he'd done a lot more filming than than anyone knew. And apparently it was like four hours of material and stuff like that. And it just needed to have effects and post-production added to it and stuff like that. And then out of that came this hashtag, release the Snyder Cut, where everyone started banging on about um, wanting to see this cut. And I met, I think they then, didn't they take out, like, pay loads of money to get a billboard or something for it as well? Okay. They, I mean, their people went proper to town with their companion for it. Um Whereas a part of me was like, yeah, I'm interested, but I'm not. I'm not gonna like do a hashtag and stuff like that. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I'm, I'll just crack on. But now um, it's been announced that actually they are going to release the Snyder Cut. They're going to add in all the post production and stuff like that, and they may even get some of the actors to come back to do additional filming. Okay, um, but what? Wow. Okay. Yeah, but what they're going to do, and this is where it gets a bit cheeky. What they're going to do... <laughs> bit cheeky. Yeah, a bit cheeky, bit tasty, is they're going to release it on um, HBO Max, okay. which is, the, which is the, the new streaming service along with the other 50,000 streaming services. Which is, which is my problem with El Ministero del, del uh, Tiempo. Yeah, Ministry of Time. They've taken it off Netflix and put it on, on um, HBO. And I'm like, yeah. man... And that's, oh, HBO, that's HBO. That's HBO worldwide. That's HBO I, World, yeah. I don't know if that is that the same as HBO Max. Oh, know, if you if you pay off. that, do you get? I don't know. So it's anyway, like Amazon, you know, you get Amazon, but then you haven't got Amazon. Uh, you haven't got stars, and but yeah. So so this is gonna get released um, next year as part of the. I, I think that's when HBO Max launches. Yeah. So I think it's their yeah. So I think this will be one of their launch things. So clearly, it's a it's a bit of a money maker to get people get people in, isn't it? Yeah. But my thing is, I don't want to pay, I don't want to pay money to get HBO Max so I can watch the Snyder Cut. Well, I mean, we've been here before. There's just far too many streaming services for anyone to keep up with. I, I mean, there's this. Number one, just to keep track of who's showing what, but also my budget can't. I can't add any more streaming services. My budget is done. I've honestly lost count of the amount of new streaming service there. Are. So my thing is, I'm interested in seeing the Snyder Cut. I, I'm interested, but I'm just not prepared to pay for it. So whether that means I'm going to have to contact Bucky, I don't know. Will it be any better? Well, the, I'm I'm up, I'm up for it though. I'm up for seeing it. Oh, this is oh no, that was the other thing. Is they were saying that the room there was another rumor saying they were going to drop it as episodic, almost like a TV series, almost like four parts. I'd quite, I'd be up for that as well, to be honest. But again, it all depends on how much money they put into it in terms of doing the post production and all the rest of it. Um, but yeah, I just I don't know, I don't know. Uh, it's 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 intriguing. So yeah, so that was that bit of news. The other bit of news, which is the same, which is on a similar tip actually. Um, so this week it it was two years since Solo came out. Two years already. Yeah, apparently. Um, just to say to the guys that are listening, if you if you got any questions whilst we're chatting, just um, do a chat thing i don't know but he said that i've put it there. have you all right well i can't see yours can i no it's, it's in general chat if you press the button that says chat where's it here. where's the button that says anyone would think button. anyone oh, would think that me. i work in it oh yeah <laughs> there it is oh yeah wow. There it is. wow there's loads of shit there damn oh my word do, do you uh, know what now i feel like we're an episode of um bulletproof <laughs> what was i saying I, I've, I've got some news no, no, I wouldn't we hadn't finished the Solo 2 thing. Oh, yeah, Solo 2. So Solo 2, two years. So apparently there's a hashtag uh, called um, Make Solo 2 Happen. So my question to you, do you want to see a sequel to Solo? Boom. I want to see... Um, 
I'm not going to say no. I'd be up for a sequel to Solo, but I'd be more up for a Calrissian movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, I was all set to go. No, I, I would. Do you know what? I would like to see Solo 2. The reason being that I think if we've got a Solo 2 movie, they would drop all that bullshit origin stuff, which is the stuff that I didn't like about the first true, film. True, 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 right? true. I I really enjoyed Solo, but the stuff that I didn't like was like this is how he got this is how he got the name Han Solo. This is how he met Chewie. This is how he won the minute. I'm not interested. Oh, they start that actually stuff. they actually start telling the story with that. So I think I think the second yeah, film no, would mean they, we would just get a Han Solo adventure, and I didn't and I didn't mind the dude they got to play Han Solo. I thought he did a good job. I thought um, my boy from Community was doing Lando. He was just nailing it every every scene he was in. Yeah. What's this? So uh, Pete says <laughs> regarding bulletproof. See, this is going to end badly, isn't it? And which one is Pike? All right, now you've done it. <laughs> I am I am blatantly Pike. So, which one's Ashley Waters? Is that Pike? Yeah, yeah. So Pike's the sort of at home. At home. Hold up a minute! Can. It's I get. <laughs> um, I forgot yeah, his name now. Bishop, you're a bit more hot-headed than me. I mean, that is true, but it's not like I'm. Sh- it's not like I'm like dealing with women left, right, and centre, though, is it? Well, no, no. But you got to. You got to. No, do I'm I, not talking about the women. Okay, all right. Do I have a short temper? Yes. Am I more likely to shoot a man than you? Yes. Well, I, I kind of think you've answered the question. Yeah. <laughs> right back to where I started. Yeah. Okay. All right, man. Fuck yeah. You know. Did that answer? Did that answer your question, Pete? <laughs> Although you can't drive though You're a shit driver So when they're having the car chases and stuff Actually no that is true And in But here's where it gets weird though Because if you if you didn't transpose that to bad boys It gets, it gets complicated Because technically I would say you're more You would be more the Mike Lowry character But then that's Mike making Larry. me say That's, my, that's me That's me then sort of admit Saying yeah because but Mark Lowry is quite a smooth character, which you are not. So I don't Excuse know me? how that works. Excuse me. Whereas this isn't just pla- this isn't just this this isn't just the white. This isn't just me getting grey. This is platinum. Platinum has value and worth. That makes me a silver fox, man. Smooth is written in my dick. If you cut me open right in the middle, it would just say smooth. Look, that's only going to be good if they reboot Santa Claus and make him a brother. <laughs> You started this, Peter. You, <laughs> you started. This is why we shouldn't do stuff live or why. like video. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Shit just kicks off. Look, look. All right. Let me just... Anyway, I, I've got my news. Yep. Big finish uh, this week. Was it this week or last week? They launched, they uh, announced a new title. I'm going to share my screen just so you can see it. <gasps> so it's basically it's called masterful it's a multiple master episode and i'm just looking at the picture on the front i've got one two three four five six seven eight nine masters on it um and they've got jeffrey beavers in it they've got mark gattis Derek jacoby alex mcqueen milo parker eric roberts john sim michelle gomez all playing the master or oh, missy and I'm like, this, this is new. This is new. I, I'm, I'm quite excited. I don't usually go in for the villain stuff, but. Have you, have you heard about the multi-arc thing that they're doing? Uh, multi-platform thing they're doing? I think, I can't, I think it's called Time Lord Victorious. Vic- Victorious. But it's not just Big Finish. It's BBC as well. And they're doing loads of different things. It's not just audio. It's like they're going to do comics. They're going to do novels. No, um, I've not heard of this. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have to look into that. Not now, though. No, not now. I've I heard it today on Big Finish's Twitter that they said that they're gonna stop doing um, monthly monthly Doctor Who audios. Mm. But here's the thing with Big Finish is like their stuff is phenomenal, but I can't believe it. Yeah, consistently, and they're not just Doctor Who. Like all of their audio stuff. I don't know if you listen to audio dramas, but if you if you want to start, Big Finish is the place to start. But like, because yeah, they don't just do Doctor Who; they've got a whole range of yeah. stories. Um, but um, 
for me, the amount of content that Big Finish not only has, but it's just dropping week after week after week is I don't a. Know how they do it? Well, I, I don't know how they do it, but a two. I can't keep up, um, not just in time, but also in money. And I've said this loads of times. I generally, I can't believe I'm going to say this and do another streaming service thing, but I generally think that they should just do a Netflix. Yeah, well, I suppose what makes it different is that there's no audio streaming services, are there? Well, well I mean, Audible. What's Audible? Audible. Yeah, forget. I even forget. As I said it. As I said it. I knew. I knew. Oh, is it better than um, the- right? I'd, I've I've got a very I have a very definite answer to this one. So Peter's asking. We've mentioned Doctor Who. Was he talking times. to you? Though he could have been talking. That could have been that question could have been directed to me. Do you know what I mean? Don't just roll in there because you missed the Doctor Who. No, no, no. It's fine. No, 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 no. No. I want no. now. It's my turn. Yeah. Can I just say we started here with me talking? Why was the, why was that even necessary? I don't even. I, why do I'm drinking? Why? Just chat, man. Okay. So. I've, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get on with it, man. Oh yeah, right. So, um, Doctor, Doctor Who for me is when it has, when it's Doctor Who TV when it's at its best is brilliant. Uh, when it's at its worst, it's terrible. And a lot of the time, it's kind of in that middle ground where it's just really up and down. Yeah. Um, and I'm quite loyal anyway. I'll watch it regardless. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But what I found with the audio dramas from Big Finish is they are consistently high, consistently. You may get a duff one here and there, but it is literally a sporadic bad one where the majority is consistently good quality. Yeah, I can't, yeah, nailed it. I, I think the, um, some of the, and the thing is the fact that they took Paul McGann. They took, and, one, epi- they took one adventure and they took that doctor and ran with it and made something brilliant. And you feel like yeah. you've got a legitimate eighth doctor. And definitely some of his adventures are I would I'll, I'll go and rock and say uh, have been better than what I saw in the in the TV run for, for that, several years. Got, um, um, they've got the, the adventures of River Song. Oh, it's quality. Brilliant quality. Quality. You've got the master adventures with Derek Jacobi. I mean, number one, it's Derek Jacobi. Yeah. And it's fantastic. Um, and I just, I just started listening to, I listened to the first episode of, um, uh, they're doing a, a series of Adventures of Susan, the Doctor's granddaughter from the first, from William Hartnell days. And it's really interesting because it's very, very different. It's not full of action. It's more thoughtful. There's more detective work going on. There's more diplomacy going on. Um, and it was great. It was just really different. And I'm like, I can't see that working as a TV spin-off. Somehow. Yeah. And, and also as well, I've heard... Um... I haven't listened to any of them yet, but I've heard quite good things about the Torchwood stuff. Yeah, yeah, so have I. Um, and I think what's really great with the Big Finish stuff, and I think the fact that BBC kind of endorses it is good, is it gives it a real chance for characters that get a bit short short shrift on the show, or you sort of watch and you kind of go, oh, I'd love to see more of that, or in this case, hear more of them. And um, I listen to one with the Doctor's Daughter. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? The, the one that I would have loved to see them do an audio drama was the, um, it was the woman from Blink who we said she would have made a great companion. And they did a detect, they made Nightingale and whatever. I yeah, I can't them. remember what their names were, but it ended yeah. up with them kind of teaming up like a sort of, right at the end, they were going to be like a sort of team. And I was like, that, I would, that's what I'd like to see as an audio absolutely, thing. And I, and I think that's what Big Finish does really well. It taps in to the, to, quote use that word zeitgeist of what people want which is why i really really hope that they've got something in the works for um the other doctor really hoping they've got something in the works right, for I, just, I just i love the other doctor so much i know i know yeah so much um so where are we so we did make solar 2 happen yes so i said i would like to have seen um i'd like to i'd like to have seen another one i don't think we'll get another one my last bit of news uh, quite sadly, is that um, Armour's Foul gets released on June the 12th quite on, sadly. <laughs> on Disney Plus. And I watched another trailer for it today and I'm still still spitting feathers. Um, and yeah, I'll probably watch it because I've got Disney Plus. And to be honest, they're not exactly dropping new shows every week on Disney Plus. So, you know, I just so, died. 
Um, um. <laughs> <laughs> is that two ohms cancel each other out? Then yeah, yeah, oh, okay. obviously. It's only something that seems like a, that seems like a good point to move to week that was then. It's time for the week that was. Oh uh, yeah. Evil. Where? That's right. Everywhere. What so, are you talking I, about? Right. I caught this show randomly yesterday. Called I say I say randomly, Bucky hooked me up, but you know I me. Mean. So uh Evil is a show um which I, I think heard of this show. I think is right up your street. I hadn't heard of it, and we Sue and I watched the first, we watched the pilot. So it stars the the guy who played Luke Cage. Oh yeah. Um, is it Mike Coulter? Yeah. And basically, it's him, a woman who I think she's a forensic psychologist, and another guy's like an electronics expert. And um, they basically travel around um, investigating religious phenomenon. Okay. So it could be possession, it could be miracles, it could be ghosts, it could be bloody, bloody, blah. And we watched the first episode, which was about demonic possession. And the reason, and he's training to be a Catholic priest, and she's like the skeptic. So if you think, if you if you look at it from an X Files point of view, he'd be the Mulder and she'd be the Scully. Yeah. And he's kind of, and he's basically gone to bring her in. And he's like, no, she's like, I don't believe none of this stuff. He's like, that's okay. I want that. I want someone to come in with a skeptical eye and stuff. And. Even though some supernatural stuff happened in the first episode, what I loved about it, in the same way like what X Files did, was it kind of gave you both sides of the coin. Yeah. Okay. And you made your own judgment call as to which side you fell on. Now, whether or not that carries on throughout the show, I don't know. I only watched the first episode, but the first episode I thought was money. I, I really enjoyed it. Okay. All right. I'll put it on my list with everything else. Yeah. Sorry, man. If we're talking um, sort of demonic possession and stuff, I just want to mention one of my... Every time I think about this movie, I realise I've got such a deep abiding love for it. It must be one of my favourite movies. I've never put it in like... Someone says, what's your favourite movies? I've never put it in a list, but I realise it must be. It's a Denzel Washington movie called... Oh, yeah. That's a quality film. It's just... Everybody, stop what you're doing now. Go watch that movie. I don't that even is... know how you get hold of it now. I don't know if it's on. Maybe it's on. Maybe it's on. It might be on Amazon. I don't know. I don't know if it is. I'm going to watch it now. I'm not. I'm going to go to bed no. afterwards. But um, I'll probably yeah. drink some more then go to bed. But yeah, but you know, it, it it's a re- it's the one where you see. Um, I don't know if it's a demon or the devil. Um, but you can it's just a, jump. Demon. Through, just jump yes. from body to body, in it by contact. Yeah, by yeah, 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 yeah. And, and there you, is a. There's a really the good scene. A good scene, yeah. But it's just the beginning where this guy's being like sentenced to death for, um, you know, being a serial killer, and he's being led to the uh, electric chair, and he's singing this song, which is a demon signature song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then while they're strapping him in, he jumps across to one of the guards, and suddenly, this guy is sitting in the chair going, "What? What the hell? What's going on? What's the gun?" And they put the helmet on him, and like you think, that's just got to be rough, man. Poor guy, just going, "What? What just happened?" <laughs> So you know what to do. Check out the website, geeksyndicate.co.uk. Many thanks to Pete for being here and contributing, but also to Jimmy because we actually lost a big part of this podcast. And Jimmy Aquino of Comic News Insider, the best podcast on the other side of the pond, was here contributing, but we lost all of that. Sorry, Jimmy. Yeah. Life. Better luck like next time. Yeah, didn't do it on purpose. No. Um, but... Uh, have a listen. Tell us if you liked what we said, if you disagreed with what we said. Let us know. Send us an email, the geeks at geeksyndicate.co.uk. Get in touch with us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. It's easy. So, till next time, Geek Syndicate, we, we out. out.